of successful Hollywood films like Body Heat, The Big Chill, and Wyatt Earp. My brother and I used to play a uh, western out back of the house. It didn't matter. Did it? it didn't look like the Wild West. It was a perfect landscape for any kind of imaginary game. I thought it was the most beautiful place I had ever seen. You know, uh, the rolling hills, the ride up there was magnificent. You thought you were going to some sort of um, heavenly place, you know, high, high in the mountains. And you could go swimming there. You could play golf. My father did. You could um, walk around the hills, hike, picnic, snow, um, snow sled in the in the winter. It was just heaven to me. And of course. The wildness of the area generally, I mean, every neighborhood was nestled within a, a wood, you know, a forest, a hill. Uh, there was nowhere that you couldn't explore and imagine it to be anything. When people ask me where I'm from, I always say West Virginia. I never will say Florida or Pennsylvania or, or California. I, I'm very proud of my connection to West Virginia. It's, um, you know, it's such a beautiful place. It's so unusual. It's such a mix of of real problems and incredible natural beauty. I'm fascinated by the whole place and proud to be sprung from it. Television is a powerful medium to change the fabric of our culture. For some talented West Virginians, it's a way of going beyond the mountains to communicate thoughts and ideas. Faith Daniels and Ed Rabel, Tony Brown, host of public television's Tony Brown's Journal. What are they doing there? Did they download it? And John Hendricks, founder of the Discovery Channel and a revolutionary cable television programmer who understood that when it came to documentaries, knowledge was not only power, it was entertainment. I remember when we got our first television set. It must have been 1957, uh, around mid-year. Um, and so I was around five years old, and I kept hearing all these adults talking about television i had never seen it and so the day arrived and had this television set and of course you turned it on and there was no reception because all if you lived in west virginia you lived down in the valley and you lived by the creeks and that's how people you know define where you live you live up pigeon creek or mate creek or blackberry creek and um so to get reception you had to put a antenna on top of the nearest hill and run a coax cable down and my mother's brother Ralph knew a lot about uh, electronics and radio, and I remember him helping my father and my brother actually rig this uh, cable that went up to the nearest hill, and there we got these first magical television images in. And for me, that it had a profound effect. I was just, and again, this curious kid, and there, anything that could bring in the outside world, whether it was reading, which is a great tool to bring in the outside world, or now this marvelous tool of television, and uh, I often think now, back then, that was really the birth of the cable industry. The birth of the cable industry happened in the hills of uh, Pennsylvania and West Virginia because uh, television reception was only possible because of cable. There would be a community antenna that everybody would hook into by cable. And so in the late 40s and 50s, that's where cable really had its birth. And there I was uh, getting uh, uh, cable television early on and little did I know that it would have kind of a profound impact on my, my career. The natural beauty of West Virginia may have inspired William Robinson Lee's dream to paint America. His paintings of the American West displayed a virtuosity that made him one of the most beloved artists of all time and earned him the title of the Sagebrush Rembrandt. West Virginian Blanche Lazelle was a pioneer in the art world and one of the first U.S. women to work in abstract and cubist art. She has influenced a generation of American artists, including a contemporary West Virginia artist, Justina Hart. Another West Virginian who blazed a trail in the world of art and images was Frances Johnson. This self-portrait reveals the sly humor and inborn artistic talent that earned Johnson a gold medal at the Third International Photographic Congress in Paris, and a rewarding career as one of the nation's leading photojournalists. Creativity runs like an underground spring through West Virginia, a state that is home to many of our country's finest fictional writers. Pearl Buck, 
was one of the first writers to emerge from this rugged landscape. But many others have followed. And this wonderful thing is my grandmother's Joseph Kurtz. Mary Lee Seppert, National Book Award winner, author of the Beulah Quintet and founder of the Penn Faulkner Award, believes that the influence of place and homeland on a writer's life is inestimable. This is the picture that really staggers me. It's the picture of the first meeting of my parents. There's my father looking at my mother. And that was their first meeting, the picnic at Kanawha Falls, and somebody took a picture. Look, they see nobody else. Isn't that wonderful? There's a part of us in West Virginia that when you leave, not the state, when you leave your county, you might as well go any place. My county is Kanawha County in the Kanawha River. I was born there. I spent a good time at Cedar Grove. For many years, I always had a yearning. If I'd get to Cedar Grove, everything would be all right. It's just there. And everybody has their river, don't they? And that's my river. You don't really leave. You have... Uh, the one thing you have to do, certainly as a writer, is leave. Because trying to write where all around you is what you're writing about is very difficult. You don't get the focus. But it's always there in dreams. Other West Virginia writers include John Knowles, author of the classic A Separate Piece. Stephen Coombs, whose novels such as Flight of the Intruder consistently top the bestseller list. Also Eugenia Price, with historical romance classics such as Savannah. Denise Jardina, author of The Unquiet Earth and Storming Heaven, and Pinkney Benedict, who wrote Dogs of God, have also earned critical praise for their novels. While poets Muriel Dressler, author of Appalachia, My Land, and Louise McNeil, author of Hill Daughter and Other Works, both found their inspiration in their home state. When Henry Louis Gates, Jr. wrote Colored People, his autobiographical tale about growing up in West Virginia, he revealed to the world the beauty of life in a small West Virginia town during the 60s. I think I most remember the mountains, of course. I mean, everyone from West Virginia is mountain-oriented, mountain-fixated. You don't realize how beautiful the mountains are until you go away for the first time for a um, sustained period. And coming back, you see these glorious mountains. And uh, I think that as much as African-American culture has shaped who I am, being in West Virginia has shaped who I am, uh, being a mountaineer, a certain rugged individualism, a certain appreciation of nature. Um, I grew up hunting and fishing in a culture where people hunted and fished and took fresh air for granted. I also remember having been born in 1950, um, a nurturing sense of warmth that I experienced from growing up in a village, essentially. I mean, to me, West Virginia is a village. It's a little, small city. West Virginia has its share of television and theatrical entertainers performance artist and musician Ann Magnuson. Actors Conchata Farrell, Peter Marshall, David Selby, Don Knox, comic genius Soupy Sales, and of course, yours truly, all West Virginian. Long known for its traditional music, West Virginia has a rich and diverse musical heritage, beginning with the famous blues singer Ada Bricktop Smith. Pulitzer Prize-winning classical music composer George Crumb, Metropolitan opera stars, Eleanor Stieber and Phyllis Curtin. Other West Virginians practice their artistry in the world of country music. Harold Hawkshaw Hawkins, Red Sovine, and Charlie McCoy. And Country Music Hall of Fame member, Little Jimmy Dickens. <laughs>
Grammy Award-winning country music singer Kathy McKea believes that West Virginia is more than a place. It's a feeling that stays in her heart and her mind as she travels throughout the country. It's an interesting thing, you know. I travel around the country and I meet a lot of people from West Virginia who've had to move for economic reasons. You know, the plant closes down or they get transferred. And um, I'll say, you know, where are you from? And they'll say West Virginia. And I'll say, oh, how long have you been gone? 25 years. But they still think of themselves as West Virginians, you know. It, it's just, um, it runs real deep. And most people that I've met that had to move away wish that there was a way they could move back. You know, a lot of times they, you know, they get into a life and a job and they can't, you know, it's real hard to pick up their roots and go back. But people always in their heart carry that with them. And I feel like I'm the same way, you know. My family, my brothers, you know, live here. My mom and dad live here. My cousins, my aunts, my uncles. And uh, it's, you know, sometimes I just need to come home. And I'm really glad to be home.